Well, hi, everybody. And this is Dem Amasal. And it is Friday evening, which means it's time for us to play a little bit, uh, coping with life. Uh, I just want to apologize for being a couple of minutes late. I forgot, of course, that I had to change all my Wi-Fi passwords because apparently my network is working again at last. Uh, after a week, I want to tell you a week of not having uh, my computers all working without having streaming working, only being able to watch basic television. You know, it was it was quite a week. But I am here and it's wonderful to be with you. And I'm hoping that you will enjoy what I put together for you for tonight. Um, we're going to do a couple of ideas about Christmas. We've got a couple of uh, cooking hacks that I found that I thought would be interesting for you. And generally, who knows what else? You know, it kind of depends what I come up with. But first of all, uh, let me have coffee. Mm. Now then, I'm going to start off by telling you, you know, a few weeks ago, you remember I said to you that you could freeze whole eggs. Do, do any of you remember that? Uh, I quite honestly didn't think that was possible. If I lift this up, it would be easier. Yeah, uh, I didn't think it was possible, quite honestly, but I did it. Uh, because what's the point of talking about it if I don't try it? So I want to show you what it looks like. Uh, I accidentally ordered up two dozen eggs instead of a dozen. And I went, oh, well, okay, let me freeze them. So I did. And here is a frozen egg. <laughs> I caught it. <laughs> um, isn't that pretty? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it in here and leave it while we do the broadcast because what we'll see is what does it look like after it's thawed, all right? So there it is uh, in its container that I did it in. And I've got some fun things that I wanted to talk to you about, and I know I'm going to make a big mess. So I think I'll start with the clean things first. Oh, Sharon's saying, I have separated them and then frozen them. Yes, that's also uh, one way of doing it. But I try to think, Sharon, when I use them, what am I most likely to use them for? And I would say for baking or... Uh, have a fried egg. So that's why I did them all as one. So first of all, um, this is a Christmas present. Uh, how many of you finished your Christmas present? And remember, there's a huge backlog now of the supply chain. So get out and get your Christmas presents in a hurry, make a plan. And I've got a couple that you might, you know, like enjoy. Uh, I found some of these uh, page a day type uh, data and diary things. What do you call them? Calendars. Um, let's see if I can get it out without ruining it. You know, these sort of things where you rip off a page every day. And I looked up to see what they are worth these days. Um, this particular thing is selling anywhere from 15 to 20 something dollars. Uh, uh, that when I checked it out, I found it in the dollar store for four bucks. So think about that, all right? The things you can find in the dollar store, and I saw them, and I think I picked up half a dozen of them, because what a nice present for anybody. So don't have to spend a whole lot of money. The other thing I did was I picked up, if I can find it, um, some of these bottles. And what I've done, there's a reason why I did that. I mean, not to do this. I have some canola oil that I bought a year ago. Now, what's your, what's your best guess? How long does canola oil last for? If you haven't opened it, this one has now been opened, but if you haven't opened it, um, do you know how long it lasts for? And what about pure olive oil? Two different sorts of oil, different lifespan. So this one um, has a best before date of December. And I thought, so it could be a good idea for me to use them up. So what I've decided to do, 
is yeah i've been drying some rosemary from my garden it smells wonderful um and all i did was put a dried sprig in there and fill it up with canola oil how many of you and then i'm going to put a little label on it to go sells you know rosemary infused oil um you know a nice little present for anybody that cooks and who doesn't cook these days so simple to do and these were uh i think i paid a buck maybe a buck 50 for these and by the way they've got quite a secure stopper on them you know what i mean so especially if you get it on straight so <laughs> there you go all right so you know what i mean it's 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 got a good secure stopper on it so i thought that was a nice little present to give to almost anybody and Okay, and I just happen to have rosemary in my garden, and I love the smell of it, and it's great in, in that. I've also been growing, you've probably seen them, um, little baby cactus plants that will be gifts for people as well. I've been growing them all year. And so the, my, my friends are going to get lots of little things. And here, hello, Irit, and hello, Antoinette. Good to see you. Um, yes, Sharon saying, I gave some hand-poured soap last year. This year, I'm giving homemade vanilla. If I could find mine, Sharon, we know it's in this house somewhere. I have still not found it. Can you believe it? Uh, but it's been there for, what, over a year now. <laughs> if I can find it, that'll be going in as well. But the thing I wanted to talk to you about um, is this. Think about the waste of paper. And I'm thinking particularly things like wrapping paper. Think about how much paper we just literally spend wrap and throw away. And I don't know about you, but I've sort of got to a thing with my friends. Um, I don't need to impress them with fancy wrapping paper anymore, although I've always had great joy in doing it. So here's what I've decided this year. Some of my friends are going to have their presents in a plastic container like this, right, with a lid uh, and a bow on it, OK? Because when they finish unwrapping their presents, this container is useful, all right? It's not going to end up in the garbage. Good point. Um, some of my friends are going to have their presents in a used coffee can. I painted the top silver, and if you can imagine it, A second. If you can imagine it with a nice pretty bow on top, all right, um, filled with cookies and other good good things, but a really nice container. Makes sense? All right. Um, by the way, this is one of those bottles, and I thought, I've got an awful lot of wrapping paper left, all right? That, and I'm going to wrap um, a lot of my oil in wrapping paper, and I might throw some glue on it and then throw some sprinkle at it, you know, glitter. But I'm going to use up that sort of paper, give it a second life. And also think about the boxes you might receive. This is a box from my phone a few years ago. Really nice box. Really nice box. Uh, obviously, for a moment, my friends are going to think I'm giving them a Samsung phone. Uh, but what I will do is put a bow over that. But
but what you know that's going to be a really nice present for somebody if I put some nice ribbon around it and make it pretty. And think about containers that are you know reusable or that you can use them. I thought for for my gardening friends, I would put their presents in a planter. Good idea. So I can fit a lot of presents in there, um, but they end up with a planter as well. Another nice box that came in from mm, the cream cake from Ginza. That sounds like Benji gave me that, whatever it was. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate the donation. Thank you so much. Um, all right. How many of you have got friends that are campers? Um, I've been making, um, in here, I've got uh, hand soap, but I've got towelettes in there, and I'm going to dry them and, you know, give them a stack of um, soap-infused uh, towelettes for when they go camping. This is another, this is an English custard tin. But imagine this one. Uh, I'm going to take the outside off and then, you know, wrap it in nice, pretty ribbon. All right. Uh, oh, I wanted to talk to you about this. How many of you use shampoo in a bar of soap rather than in a container of soap? A plastic container. I tried that this last, uh, I, I got it about a few weeks ago. And I am amazed how well it works. First of all, it's really sudsy very quickly, which is more so than my, you know, shampoo in a bottle is. But as you know, I've learned now to take the product out of my hair using regular bar soap. Um, and once I've got, you know, you can feel if the product is out because your hair starts to squeak that it's clean um, of product. And then I, I shampoo my hair. I still use my um, anti, um, what do you call it, dandruff shampoo every about once a week. But uh, for the rest of the time, I now use a bar of shampoo rather than a bottle of shampoo. And I wondered if any of you have made that move. And also, how many of you knew that it was available? Uh, my hair hasn't fallen out yet. <laughs> you know, there's part of me that goes, I wonder what's going to happen to my hair. Um, yes, Jody's saying, I've seen them, but I haven't tried them. Well, that's what I was at. Now, you know me. I'm all about, what, what was my first quote of this evening? Hang on a second because it was relevant to this conversation. Just let me find it here. Um, life is trying things to see if they work. How many of you agree with that? Yes, Sam, I agree. Uh, Sam saying Lush has some ultra yummy smelling shampoo bars. Yes, absolutely. So if you haven't tried them, I now have... And as I said, uh, I think my hair still looks pretty good. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now. So do you agree with me? Think about useful containers to give presents in rather than, um, you know, just go for the paper that's going to be used once and then fill the, fill the landfill. That's that would be my recommendation. I don't know any gardener that, that isn't going to be happy that they got an extra planter. All right. Um, and then, as I said, for my non-gardening friends, I'm just going to get them containers that they can use. So there we go. All right. Now then, <laughs> we got some fun things that I want to do today, if I can remember how to do this. 
I saw something that fascinated me. Now, I tried it this afternoon to make sure that it sort of works. So it doesn't look very pretty, but it will give you the idea. Apparently, I've got it all over my fridge, too. Um, uh, it's bubble chocolate. Now, normally, we do this at the end, but it's chocolate, and I had to make it so I could show you what it looks like. So, look interesting. And I'm going to do a taste test for you so you can... I hope it doesn't break my teeth. Mmm. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I need to go halfway through one of these. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Now, what do you think the bubbles are made of? And I have never seen this done, and I thought I'd got to try that. And I know that you guys are going to want to try it too. So, it turns out that the bubbles are made from milk powder. Hi, Bernice. Sharon saying, I'm getting ready for my first craft soap fair. Ah, soap craft fair. I've added bath salts, milk bath, etc. Good for you. Well done. No, no marshmallow. No, it's made from, if you can believe it, milk powder. How many of you are going... What? So, shall we try it? Because remember, life is trying things to see if they work. And, here we go. First thing you need to do is to obviously get some milk powder. So I've got some here. And we're going to need some water. And we're going to need a heat source. So can you see that I've got I've just got my little frying pan here on my crepe maker. I've got some protection on my crepe maker. So I'm going to use this as a heat source. But So I've got a little bit of water. Don't need too much. And then I'm just going to put some milk powder in. take quite a bit more than that. So let's see. And this is why I needed to just try it out this afternoon because I needed to find out what the problems were with it, if any. So you will see that it's pretty granular. powder is grainy. Right, I can put more in there. I might need a different container any minute now. And my recommendation is to put in quite a bit of the milk powder because you're going to need to get rid of the liquid by cooking it. So you want it fairly solid to start with. So 
So uh, I would say that's sort of like caramel thickness. All right. And then I, yep. So I got my little frying pan here and I'm just going to pour that in there. And it takes a little while to cook. Um, so all I'm going to do is just every now and then, I'm just going to keep moving it a little bit until it starts to cook up. Now, I really didn't believe that this would work, but it did. And what you do, just so you know, you keep doing this until it starts to almost crystallize. It's a bit like working with sugar, which makes me wonder whether, in fact, um, there is sugar of some sort in milk powder. Jody, perhaps you can check that for me because it definitely does form almost like a sugar bowl for those of you who've made candy. So you can see that it's beginning to cook up now. And it's a little antisocial, but I just wanted to show you that it is possible to do. And what a fun thing to give people. And of course, I already thought to myself, hang on, let me do this. Hang on a second. Um, you know, Jody got me uh, hooked on these um, wonderful sweet drops so what if we put some drops of uh what have i got here english toffee flavoring or you know my other option is to put in some salted caramel so can you see now that it's you know sort of looks like scrambled egg thick scrambled egg which is what we need and i'm still going to keep cooking it And what I found when I was doing it earlier uh, is just to take a spoon and just take a little bit out and let it cool a bit. And when it cools, if it's pretty solid, then you know it's done enough. But as you can see, this is now looking pretty done. Is that amazing? I'm going to have to look at the comments now because I can't cook and watch comments at the same time. Okay, so look at that. I didn't think that was possible. All right, so here's the bit that I took out earlier. And then you can just roll it into a ball. See that? So, and the trick is to do different size balls. Because bubble chocolate isn't all the same size. Hang on, this one's not sticking together as well. Stick together. Actually, it's too big. Now, I cannot imagine any kid or anybody that's a kid at heart that's not going to enjoy this.
Again, a bit big. And what I'm going to do is while I am doing this, I just want to take, hmm, what did I do with that, people? Okay, I've got some chocolate here. I've got more chocolate. Um, hang on, let me see the comments. I'm just going to let some of that chocolate start to melt, which I think it will do. This is some chocolate that I had in my um, pantry, but when we had that heat wave, it melted. And then when it solidified again, you know, it started off looking like this, which is how I buy my slab chocolate. Um, Jody, you're always asking me. There it is. Um, I And sort of to make chocolates at, at, for Christmas. But it was so hot that it totally melted the chocolate, uh, the one lot that I had. So what I thought was, okay, what can I use it for? And I found out that this works. So Hang on. I don't want to spend all evening doing it, but I just wanted to show you the idea. So, all you do is you literally make little rounds. I'm going to lower the camera for you. Oh, Bernice is asking me. <laughs> Denise is asking me, how's my sugar after doing all these uh, experiments? Yeah, I have to be careful with them. You know that. But I found a new way to bring my blood sugar down pretty quickly. All right, so all you do is you just get them, you know, together like this in a sort of haphazard little group. And then this chocolate can take a while. We'll let it just quietly melt while we carry on talking. Hmm. So my life is filled with, hmm, what can I do with that now? The same thing as, you know, I had canola oil and I thought, what can I do with that? And I thought, why don't I make, um, you know, presents out of the canola oil? good idea. I'm going to have some more chocolate now. All right, so there's the round thing. Now you know what it looks like. If I bite into it, it looks like almost like a Malteser. Mmm. And Bernice is saying it's a great thing when I, when I go down to visit Benji and the children. Because it's like clay, yeah. But it's also a little bit hot, so you have to be careful. But now this is cool. Oh, it's fine. I'm going to just put this in the microwave just to speed it up. Another hack while I'm at it. I keep all my bamboo type things in a old plastic wrap roll. Holds them really nicely together. I've got another one that's got all chopsticks and things in it. I found that when using chocolate, when making chocolate, a couple of bamboo sticks are ideal for stirring it. I don't know why, but it works. So it's not melted yet. So all I'm going to do is to take my two sticks and it's starting to melt. Hmm. 
Actually, it's doing better than I thought. We'll just give it another few minutes, seconds. So this is a mixture of milk chocolate and white chocolate. Very milky chocolate. <laughs> I'm just doing it for 30 seconds. That's going to take way too long doing it the other way. My egg is starting to melt. Yeah, uh, Bernice is saying, great idea on the paper roll. I'm, you know something? Um, I use my paper roll, the uh, inside of my paper rolls, for all sorts of different things. Okay, so here we go. And it's still a bit grainy, but for the purpose that we have it, I think I can use it now. So you just put the balls sort of haphazardly together. You can see those, I hope. Yes, good. And then just cover them. And quite honestly, uh, it would make a nice dessert as well. I'm just doing this very quickly so you get the idea. Got to taste it. So, pretty simple. And it could be the base of something. In other words, you might put half a peach on top of there and then um, you know, a piece of mint or something. It would look really good. Now, obviously, I'm going to need to wait for that to dry. Cool. It'll take a while. But you get the idea. Simple. And how tasty is it? Mm-hmm. Jody. Um, just chocolate and milk powder. How bad would that be on, um, what do you call it? Glucose spikes. I don't think too bad. Part of me wishes I'd done that on a plate. Simple, cool. It's actually not cool yet, but it, yeah, it is cool. And unique, yes, I thought so. And so you imagine somebody cutting into it and finding that it's got, you know, that the, the balls are actually, they probably will think it's white chocolate, but it isn't. Yeah. Yes, um, Jody's saying, I would love that with white chocolate, the milk bubble, and dried apricots. Exactly. That's right. In moderation, not terrible. And um, I'm just making sure that I can prove it. <laughs> now, between the two broadcasts, please notice that Jody said not terrible, which means it's not good for me, but it's not terrible. Did I translate that properly, Jody? <laughs> Especially if I'm prepared to drink a load of water. Mm -hmm. All right. So 
pretty easy. As I was saying, between the two broadcasts, I actually put um, a leg of a deboned leg of lamb. In other words, it's a leg of lamb that they took the bone out and then turned it into a roast. And I did it in my halogen. And I didn't know that I was going to have my internet back. Otherwise, I would have done it while you were watching me this evening. But what I wanted to show you is what I'm going to be doing with it. Just bear with me a second. So I have got Yvonne uh, coming for dinner tomorrow. And Yvonne loves my roast beef. So what I'm going to do is give her roast beef and Yorkshire pudding and all the trimmings because that's what she loves. But Wade, I have not seen for over a year. Um, you know, that's Yvonne's significant other. And he loves lamb. And so whenever um, I cook lamb, I always kept some aside for him and sent it down to him. What I've done is I've cooked it already. I, you know, lamb is inclined to be quite fatty, so I've cut away a lot of the fat. Um, if I could undo this easily, I would undo it for you, but it's not helping me at the moment. Uh, I can help myself. If I want to, there's always a way, right? There we go. All right, so here is the meat already cooked. All right, there, there is the lamb already cooked. And here is the gravy I've already made. And what I will do is I will pour the gravy over the meat and put it in the oven um, to warm up before they arrive. So that's all done. And it's a beautiful roast of lamb, but already carved. Makes sense. And then here, um, this is the roast of beef that I'm going to do for Yvonne with the Yorkshire pudding and um, roast potatoes and all those sort of things. So we're going to put that back in there. I just want to get these back into the oven. Interestingly enough, the this amount of beef, Jody. Let's see how the prices are going in America versus in Canada. This is a top sirloin roast, triple A, and it is about a kilo. That'd be two pound, two point two pounds, thirty five and dollars forty six. Says forty five. Call it thirty five fifty. I want to put some wrap on that. Amazing price, huh? Hold on, people. Oh. I just noticed that that's got to be playing with it too much. So I will put that in to cook. Um, it won't take very long in my halogen, but it will taste wonderful because it's triple A beef. All right. So, oh, and, and the gravy. I will then make the gravy for the beef tomorrow as well. And how many of you are going, that's okay, Jody. How many of you are going, I wouldn't cook two different roasts for people. I look at it this way. I have not seen them uh, together since the time when I left my house. All right. And that's a year and a half ago now. Can you believe I've been back seven months already? And so to me, it's a small thing that I do. All right. It's, it's not... It's like if, if it's the only meal I cook them this year, 
which it may well be, then I would like them both to have what they enjoy. You know, if I were cooking for them every week, um, you know, that's a problem. And, you know, you know none of the meat's going to go to waste, right? It's either going to get eaten or it will get put into uh, baggies and frozen. Yeah. Sam says, not me. I'm an overachiever. I like to feed all the foods. Yes. And that's right. Who says we can only cook one thing at a time, right? So, oh, hang on a second. So now then the next thing is um, I've already made, I've got, this is the dough for one um, loaf. And there is another one. Yes, you can just see it. You see my ninja there, right there. <laughs> That's got more dough in it ready. So what the reason I'm doing two is one I will serve with dinner, but the other one I will bake and send it home with them because they love my bread. Uh, so that is good. I will do I will do the Yorkshire puddings and everything. I'll probably mix up the batter tonight, but cook them tomorrow. And I think I've told you before, for those of you who like Yorkshire puddings, I think you call them popovers in the States. Am I right? I think that's what they're called. Um, I found out that they freeze beautifully. So again, I will make more than I need and I will freeze them with the meat that I put in back into the freezer. So that's a really good one. Any questions? For those of you who are wondering what happened to the internet, uh, it was an incredible comedy of errors, quite honestly. Uh, the guy that came to look at it last week said to me, this problem isn't in your house. And I sort of raised my eyebrows and said, I know that. I've been trying to tell them that for a year. And... All right. Thanks, Jody. Sorry, let me just update on that. Jody saying Walmart doesn't even have the roast available. Uh, that that 20, the $28 price is from the local market for a two pound roast. OK, a, a AAA sirloin. So here was the interesting thing. The lamb didn't cost me much more um, than the beef. And that surprised me because normally lamb is way more expensive. No, what it was, uh, and I can draw it for you. How's this doing? I wonder if I can get that into my fridge so that it can harden. <laughs> you all know what I'm going to be eating tonight, don't you? It won't look pretty, but what if I stick it back into something and put it in the fridge? All And money saving tip, uh, I have stopped. Uh, my dishwasher does not dry anymore. I've, I've taken that function off. So now I wash my dishes in the dishwasher and I let time dry the dishes. And I think that will be an extra saving in the winter. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I do enjoy cooking for you. Mm -hmm. And the good news is 
only I will eat this. So the fact that I'm <laughs> playing with it is no, nobody's problem but mine. So there we go. I'm just going to stick it in the fridge. Question. Can you stick chocolate in the freezer? Anybody know? Part of me goes, <laughs> okay, shall I try it? Let's try it. All right, somebody remind me to take it out of there, please. All right. Would it condensate? Yes, you can freeze it. Okay. I think just to harden it, I just want to show that it's possible to do. Um, quite simple, really. Um, I was talking about canola oil versus um, olive oil. And just so that you know, canola oil, if you don't open it, you can keep it up to two years in the bottle that it came in. And the olive oil... They reckon 12 to 18 months maximum uh, unopened, just so that you know. Ah, Sakura's so thinking about chocolate-covered strawberries. Yes, I think the strawberries would go mushy, so I wouldn't freeze chocolate-covered strawberries. But I think chocolate, all we've got there is chocolate and um, cooked milk powder. What surprised me is how much sweeter the milk powder tastes once you've cooked it. I'm not sure what the chemical reaction is of that. Uh, I use milk powder in uh, to make my latte, um, and it never tastes that sweet to me. But boy, when you cook it up like that, it's amazing how sweet it is. Let me just test a bit more to make sure I got that right. <laughs> There's no hope for me, is there? So, um, talking about the internet, so they came and told me the problem wasn't here. That was last week. And that there would be a delay because it was a long weekend. You know, we had uh, Thanksgiving here last week. So, Canadian Thanksgiving. So then, yesterday came and I still didn't have internet. So I got upset then. So I made the call. And basically, you know, I had to play the, the waiting game while I convinced the person sitting in India that I needed to speak to a real person, um, you know, in Canada. I got that far. And then I spoke to the real person in Canada who obviously didn't read the file before talking to me. Um, so then that made me even more upset. And then I tried very hard to keep cool and polite and say, look, this has nothing to do with you, but this is what I have heard. The problem is not inside my house. The problem is, is somewhere else. That's what the technician told me. So the interesting thing was that it took me probably another hour for him to agree with me and agree to try and work out why nobody had been to help me. And I said, well, you know, it's not important why they haven't. What's important is they haven't, and I need somebody to get onto this. 
<laughs> then, you know, I got so frustrated. I'm certain some of you are probably asking yourself, why don't I just change providers? You know, there's so much competition. Why don't I just change providers? Did any of you think about that one? So I said to them, <laughs> um, I may have to, I said, I've been your client for over 30 years, but I may have to change providers if, you know, any minute now. I, I'm getting tired of being polite about this. Um, Sam keeps telling me that it could be adjacent channel interference. It's not what it was. I'll explain to you what it was in a second, Sam. So today, just as I was about to do try the broadcast using my neighbor's Wi-Fi, which, by the way, worked surprisingly well, um, <laughs> who should turn up but the uh, guys from my um, provider. And they found the junction where the signal comes onto my property. Does that make sense to everybody? Or do I need to draw that? And they changed the box there because they reckon that's old one and that's probably what's causing it. That's what they reckon, Sam. And I said, no, that's not what the guy that came and had a look at it told me. He told me that it is farther down the line. It's not just that box. The problem is farther down the line. And he said, well, let me change, you know, yeah, like, what do I know? Um, <laughs> so let me change the box and then we'll see. And I said, okay, fine. But by the way, I'm about to do a broadcast, so I won't be able to talk to you. And even then he walked in in the middle of the broadcast. That's <laughs> an amazing thing. So here's what it was. There was another junction box at my neighbor's about four houses down from mine. And when they installed the internet here, they are meant to put um, a booster switch on to tell the signal to boost it up to my place. Does that make sense? You know, like at the moment, the, the signal is here, and they're meant to put a booster thing in along that line to boost the signal up to my house. And that was never turned on. It's no wonder I've been having problems. <laughs> So, but in the meantime, I'm busy going, I've had enough, I'm going to change providers, right? You can probably imagine. So I put the phone down. This is before they came to fix it. And I phoned the competition. And again, I've got to get through all the automated systems and everything else. Don't know about you, but I, I really just want to talk to a human. And eventually I got through to somebody. And I said, um, I would like to consider changing over to you as a provider, even though I've been with my provider for 30 something years, and I want to know what it would cost me. Well, the first thing they told me was, it would cost me more than I'm paying for mine, uh, to, and, and the other people have already got my phone and my mobile, but to add television and internet would cost me more, and that isn't to get optic fiber and everything that is just to get regular all right the old you know the old copper one so i went that would cost me an extra 145 bucks a month is that right and i'm going i'm not paying that where i am so then i started to think maybe i don't want to change right now anyway so then <laughs> the story got worse you know, you've got to keep a sense of humor on these things, right? The story got way worse because then the guy said to me, hold on one second, I want to check something. And he said, I'm going to save you a lot of time. And I said, okay. And he said, we can't do it. I said, what? And he said, where you live, we have totally used up all the copper lines to where you live. So the only way we could connect you if somebody doesn't want theirs anymore, which would then free up, I think it has to free up 20 lines or something of copper, and they only had two. Now, i very technical people. But I looked at it and went, okay, got it. Uh, apparently, I'm not meant to change providers. <laughs> How many of you understand what I'm saying? You know, if there are that many hurdles in the way, then um, 
Now, I'm pretty certain if I'd said I want fiber optic, this, that, and the other, I probably could have got it today. But I don't really need all of that. How many of you still have all of that or do have all of that? You know, I've, I've got a pretty good, uh, what have I got, 188 channels. I've got, you know, full streaming service. I've got all sorts of things. But I definitely haven't, don't have to pay fiber optic prices to get them. So that's pretty good. So my question to you all is, how many of you, have any of you stopped using cable and are now using something else instead? And if so, I'd be delighted to hear what you're using. Because I am pretty certain that um, cable is on its way out uh, as, we, as we know it, all right? And that I'm pretty sure that fiber optics are going to be the start of a whole new generation of, of um, ways to see television and streaming. I spent a week without having streaming services, except I found I could get it on my phone, which was wonderful. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's only so much that you can watch on your phone because uh, I'm not a teenager. And I found that I went to sleep really quickly when I watched programs on my phone. And um, which is interesting to know if ever I want to fall asleep, I just have to try and watch something on my phone. And I also found out that, uh, as I think I described to you, that my the reason the television still worked in my bedroom was because the modem in there was so old, and, you know, and, and it wasn't a state of the art modem, and that's why it was still working. Think about that. Bernice is saying, we have cable, but we don't want to use it. We wanted to drop it, but they won't let us. But we use the free online stuff from Verizon with Disney Plus and Hulu. Okay. Um, so Bernice is saying, and YouTube. All right. And Jody's saying, we kept our cable provider for internet and landline, but we cut the cable cord and saved quite a bit. Just use a few streaming services now. So how do you get them without cable? Don't you need cable to see the streaming services? Antoinette is saying, yes, we stopped our cable. It's useless. It's just Netflix and YouTube now. So uh, help me understand that. So Netflix doesn't need to come through the cable? Technically, help me so I understand. There is a box they provide called a flex box for free. Really? Who is they? The internet provider. Sam's saying, I personally watch a lot of YouTube. Many of the top news networks post content an hour or two after cable. Sometimes they even stream it live. Netflix and Prime are internet based. Okay, so when it comes through the internet, it's coming. Okay, so I can disconnect, I can disconnect the cable and still get streaming services. I can disconnect the cable and still get Netflix and stuff. What about I'm, I'm warm. Uh, what about CNN, stuff like that? Can you still get that sort of stuff? I don't watch very much television at all, regular television. All right, Jody is saying, ours is Comcast. I don't know of the other what the other providers do. Another option would be Roku. I've got Roku on my main television. So Roku doesn't go through the cable company. Okay. All right, so hang on a second. So, but it's coming, isn't it coming through the cable? <laughs> Isn't that the cable I plug in? You're going to have to teach me, guys. I need to understand this better. So the Wi-Fi, 
Oh, wireless. Duh. Why? Bye. It's wireless fidelity. Of course. Yes. Got it, guys. All right, so now what I need to do is to find somebody who understands it a whole lot around here. I'm certain there's a guru in my community and just see what is possible. So I can do it with, is a Fire Stick only for, for Apple or is Fire Stick, can you use that for other things as well? I, I, you know, the one program I would like to be able to watch or the programs are things like BBC News, um, CNN News, um, perhaps, you know, the, I'm big. So can you get those without having cable? Have we got that far? So I thought I'd let you know, I, I'm, I've got Ivan and Wade coming tomorrow for dinner, which is going to be the first time I have entertained them since I moved here. And then on Monday, um, Doug and Jess are coming for dinner. So I will have done Thanksgiving earlier in the week. Um, and now I've got, you know, I think I've got three. Oh, I had Patty come to visit me. Uh, have lunch with me on Wednesday. So I've done more entertaining this week than I have done in two years. I hope I can manage it all. Jody's saying Fire Stick is from Amazon. Okay, I need to research what it can do. Lionel asked about that too. Okay, well, I'll leave it to my guru in, in New Hampshire then. I think she's very good at researching stuff for me. <laughs> all right, Sam saying Roku, Roku has announced the streaming CNN Go News is now available in Canada on. Right, so that's what I'm going to do. Thank you very much, Sam. That's, I thought it must be, we must be getting there. All right, uh, because that's the way people are doing it. So once I've got all that set up, I need another new television. What about, okay, so I don't need the mode. So that means I don't need a modem. Or is it the router? Which one is the one I can get rid of? You guys are so useful. I always think this is a two-way trade. It's never a one-way trade. Okay. Hi, Kez. Good to see you. Kez is saying you can watch streaming channels on YouTube on smart TVs. Yes. I need a smart TV for my bedroom. I've got one in my living room, but I need one. My, my one in the bedroom is state of the art. So, um, but that's cheaper than having cable. Oh, I will still need my modem and my router if I get rid of cable. Interesting. How many of you how many of you still watch regular TV on a regular basis? Mm. Let me ask it a different way. How many times a week do you watch regular TV? Is it daily? Is it a couple of times a week? You know, what, what is it for you guys? So really what you're saying is that if I cut cable. I will have what I've been watching on my phone, all right? That whatever I've been able to watch on my phone is what I will be able to. You still have a router and modem, no cable. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, you know, the same as all week, I have been able to watch the streaming on my phone because that's, yeah. Yeah because it was Wi-Fi. Got it. As long as I got Wi-Fi, I, yeah. So it, that I, I certainly didn't miss a whole lot. So that was good. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. All right, now then, owing to the fact we are now back in business, <laughs> 
um, I was wondering what it is that, you know, we're sort of getting geared up for, uh, I, I want to make sure that you hear what I said at lunchtime, because it's really important because we have a different audience on a Friday evening. Um, please be aware that this bottleneck that is happening with the supply chain is going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, expect the price of gas in your tank to keep going up, unfortunately. And it's already horrendous, but it's going to go more so. Expect there to be shortages of gas. Expect there to be shortages of a lot of things and expect there to be problems with the Christmas goods. Um, let me think, what is coming, what comes in basically in containers, anything that comes in, in in a container is likely to be very severely delayed. That's all the toys coming out of China. Um, you're talking a lot of produce coming in in containers. You're talking a lot of packaged goods coming in in containers. You, you know, I was saying if you possibly can, can is the operative word, get yourself extra soups in cans, you know, the hearty ones with chicken in them or beef or chowders and stuff like that, just so that you know that you're safe. If there is a shortage, I was saying, you know, it's amazing what you can do with it. One of those chunky soups, you know, you can use them and make a pot pie with it. You can use it and put it over noodles or put it over, um, you know, spaghetti squash uh, and make a meal out of it very easily. Uh, think that you've got enough to keep you going. I believe it's a really interesting thing. They're saying turkey uh, is going to be in short supply. So if you haven't already got your turkey for Thanksgiving in the States, try and get it. Chicken, for some reason, also is going to be a problem. So that's what they're saying. Um Beef, I'm definitely finding a problem getting beef here. I don't know about you guys in the States, but in Canada, it's, you know, I can get it, but it's not the grade that I want necessarily. I had been trying to get lamb for over a month, and I luckily got it this week. So, um, but again, think about it. Do you have enough paper goods? You know, do you have enough things like toilet tissue? Do you have enough paper towels? Do you have enough um, facial tissues? You know, make sure you've got those because a lot of those come in on containers as well. Uh, it will take a while. What has happened, and that's what I was trying to explain, what has happened is everybody geared down because of the pandemic. And now we suddenly came out of it and everybody's suddenly buying again. And we're ordering, you know, we do so much ordering from overseas now because of the internet. And that's what, you know, part of the problem is. Jody's saying issues with beef there in New Hampshire. Sam is saying beef has been scarce all summer. I find, yes, I agree. Or at least the good cuts. That's what I found as well. So if you see a good price on beef and you've got money, get, 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 get uh, what you can and, and put it in the freezer. I... I am now not going to fill my freezer up with so many of the small things. I'm going to start using my freezer to carry uh, roasts of meat, if I possibly can. Uh, that's that's how I'm looking at it. I'm taking the stuff out of my free freezer that is, um, you know, vegetables and stuff. Although I would also like to say that frozen vegetables are going to be a better deal than fresh. You think you will find frozen vegetables are cheaper to buy and less wastage um, than fresh. Um, we all love fresh vegetables. But if you're going to buy fresh vegetables, get them from your local farmer's market sort of thing. So what else did we find? Oh, uh, gas we've talked about. Oh, some of you may heat your homes with uh, oil. If you do understand that that also is a major issue coming up if it isn't already so if you can fill your oil tank for your heating up now do it if you haven't got the children's christmas presents do it now because it's going to be absolutely bedlam come close to christmas it won't just be the normal christmas rush it's going to be far worse because the supply will be down 
that means the prices will go up, uh, you know, because they'll be able to charge more for the few that they have got. And, uh, you know, Christmas will be more expensive. So if you possibly can, uh, do your Christmas shopping now. Also, think about what do I want to spend? How much do you plan to spend on Christmas this year? That's my next question. I think you know that I've been buying little things for the last few months. All right. So I have bought the little bottles to make the um, oil in. I've been buying all sorts of little things that I thought I can just package these up and make a nice little, you know, st stocking stuffer type stuff. And, you know, for the bigger presents, I will just get a, a nice, um, what do you call it, card for for people. You know, the, the, you know, an Amazon card or a Safeway, not Safeway, Walmart card or something like that. So they can go and get when they want to, when the prices are better, uh, they can go get what they want to. But I'm just going to do stocking stuffer type things for the main part. Sam is saying, I'm okay with Frozen. To be honest, as a busy working mum, I have to buy mainly Frozen, so I don't forget to use them before they spoil. Exactly. Um, did, Sam, I don't know if you've heard um, what I've been doing in my freezer. I keep my frozen food in um, the plastic bags now. And I no longer keep all my meats together and my vegetables together and my cheese and butter and stuff together. I now keep the bags marked the month that I bought them. I am presently eating out of July purchases. Isn't that amazing? And I'm amazed what I'm finding in there that I didn't know was in there. Uh, and so I found by doing it that way, if I really want to get to um, certain meat, I have to dig a bit to find the bag that it's the month that it was in. Uh, but I must admit that I'm eating much more intelligently and it's costing me less now. Bernice is saying, for me, cash is king. Um, we don't add stuff. We're whole. yeah. When do you move, Bernice? When when do you actually move? I think it's you know it's cash is going to be king for everybody. I have managed to. I, I've given myself a new budget. I I now try to keep my weekly grocery bill. Uh, under uh, around about a hundred bucks, which considering I live alone is still quite a lot of money, but I, that's what I've started to do to see, you know, even though I want it, do I debt have to have it? And if not, then don't put it on this bill. Yeah. You know, put it on another one maybe. Uh, and I'm trying now not to spend much more than a hundred bucks a week uh, on my groceries. Now, Sam, you sound surprised at that. Well, you remember, <laughs> I've got a, a huge freezer, you know, enough to carry a couple of bodies in there full. So I'm not short of food. Um, Bernice is saying, hubby wants to move by the end of the year. I don't know if that's realistic, no specific date yet, but I've been packing every day and cleaning every day. Yes, that's going to be a big job for you to get ready to move. You've got a lot of stuff. I know that. And by the way, uh, Bernice, was there a, a, an answer to the other problem that you had? You don't have to tell everybody what the problem was, but I just would like to know, did, did the other thing get sorted out yet? You know what I mean. Mm, no, the international bit. <laughs> How do I say this without saying what it is? <laughs> I'm trying to see how my egg is doing. It's getting, it's thawing definitely, but I don't think it's going to thaw in time. 
but what I want to see is can I still fry it or is it only that I'll be able to use it? Eh, no, it looks pretty good actually. Oh, you got no use set on that front. Okay, that's that's uh, I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. <laughs> All right, so uh, do you want me to pull that thing out of the freezer? Let's see how it looks. Of course, it's all going to break when I try to get it out, but <laughs> okay, let me tell you about freezing it. It is now frozen, and getting it out of here is a challenge. Right, but you get the idea uh, of what it looks like. And, and, you know, I just think that's a really good idea. I can imagine even some canned peaches on top and some cream. Um, by the time you serve it, oop, you know, it'll, it'll start to melt and it will be really tasty. But who knew that you could use milk powder? That's to me, was just like that. I never, ever have heard of that. Oh, it's okay to share that information? Mm, I'm still not comfortable sharing it. All right, so hang on a second. Kez is saying, I'm thinking it gets more hard to get food, etc. As more countries allow people to travel, US and Canada in November, Australians can travel to London. Yes. And that's the whole thing. The, the supply chain is going to get worse, and it's all pre-Christmas. Most of the, what I'm worried about is the stuff that is presently sitting in containers um, out in harbors across the world. It's not just the U.S. It's not just Canada. It is throughout Asia they've got the problem, all right? It, it is across the world. And what you've got to think about is a lot of those containers have got meat in them, uh, traveling one way or the other, a lot, you know, a lot of them have got vegetables in them that will spoil. You know, they they will, they will have been refrigerated enough to do the trip, but they can't last indefinitely, and so a lot of the produce is going to spoil before they ever get it to the market. It's going to be horrific, and that's why I'm saying that think ahead. You know, be prepared to think ahead and get what you need if you possibly can. Also, think about if you're going to spend money, you probably won't be able to buy as much with your money. Yes, Bernice is saying, we just need truck drivers. I wish Hubby could do that job so we could travel and live in the truck. <laughs> he said their wife can go with him. Yeah, um, you know, I want to tell you, truck drivers are in very short supply. I now see that an awful lot of the unions are getting their members to strike now for more money. Um, you know, it's going to be a whole lot of, and it's, it's not political. When I say it's not political, don't think this comes about because of one political party or another. This is happening throughout the world. And the reason is, is all the time we were locked down in pandemic, we stopped buying a lot of things. And therefore, all the factories slowed down. A lot of the factories, if you remember, I was surprised at lunchtime that, that they were saying that uh, liquor, you know, booze is going to be in short supply. And part of the reason for that is because a lot of the distilleries changed the um, factories to stop making booze and start actually making hand sanitizers and stuff like that. Now they've got to re-equip everything back to making booze. But, you know, you don't make booze in a couple of weeks. Booze takes a long time. And so, therefore, you know, if you are somebody that likes your drink, you may want to stock up on whatever drink you can find, especially if you're going to entertain at Christmas. You get the idea, right? What I'm doing is I'm adding a bottle of wine with every grocery order. I can buy wine from my uh, grocery now. And I'm adding, you know, bottles of wine now 
in case that becomes a shortage. And I'm buying local wines because I'm more likely to be able to get that. Um, so think ahead and do it by the week. We haven't got that many weeks left, have we? Think about it. What have we got? 10, 12 weeks? Not very many. Yeah, it's, you know, and the problem with inflation is that we knew it was coming. I tried to warn you of that probably a year ago, that inflation would be the result. You know, once we come out of the pandemic, um, we would end up with inflation. And again, uh, it, it has to happen because we don't have what it takes to keep, you know, to rebuild everything in a hurry. Sam saying that it's a labor revolution. Yes. You see, suddenly what, what the unions have realized is that their workers are now at a premium. And so, therefore, if you want us to keep on working, we want more money. And we will strike for that right. So this is going to be a real, hmm, I nearly used words I'm not allowed to use on, on YouTube. <laughs> um, a, a real problem. <laughs> So please don't be surprised. The other thing is I heard, for those of you who had Johnson & Johnson vaccines, I heard that they are now seriously talking a booster for Johnson & Johnson, for those of you who had that. Um, I know some of the viewers already told me at lunchtime that they are having their booster shots already. I don't think I will get mine until December because I got my last regular shot in June. So July, August, September, October, November. Yeah, I think they uh, probably it'll be December before I get the booster. So, <laughs> boy, what a year it's been. Huh? Uh, it's amazing. I tell you something else that's quite fun for me. Is that because I've now got. You can hear beeping. Oh, you're right. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I couldn't hear that. <laughs> it was my deep freeze, that one. Um, what would I do without you guys? So it's going to, what I found in, in entertaining people now, of course, is they're getting to see the renovations that have been done. And I must admit, when Patty walked into my bedroom, which now is almost clean, you know, because it, the only thing I've got in it is those units next to my bed. There are no units on the walls or anything. Um, but she was already going, wow, because of the space in my bedroom. And then she turned the corner and looked into the bathroom and just literally, I think the expression in England is gobsmacked, you know, literally. Um, she just went, oh, my God. And, it, you know, considering she's a realtor, that was, um, you know, I was happy to have that reaction from her. And she, of course, remembered what it looked like before the fire. And the, 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 you know, the shower that I had was a little pokey corner one. So she just said, oh, you did such a good job on this cell. And I said, well, you know, I spent a lot of money in this room and did without in other rooms so that I could do this. And she said it was the right call without any doubt. That is a showstopper bathroom for anybody. But can you believe my luck? I opened up the <laughs> I opened up one of the drawers of my new vanity and it totally fell apart on me. So I got back to <laughs> to the Renault guy and said, I know you thought you were done with me, but I, I said, but please look at these pictures. I opened the drawer of the vanity and all, <laughs> you know, like the drawer was hanging like this and part of the mechanism was on the floor. And I said, hmm, um, that needs a bit more help. Hi there, Niasha. <laughs> he said, not a problem. We'll send somebody to go fix it. But, you know, it's just like, it never ends. Right. That, that's the funny thing. You know, it's like life. Right. You think everything's going in the right direction and then you go, no, apparently not yet. Now, my only concern was to get it back in there 
so that it looked nice for when people came to visit this week. <laughs> How many of you can relate to that? I did not want the drawer hanging. You know, so I sort of put everything back together, back together as best I could and squared it up and going, I took everything out of there, obviously. And then just, it's now an imitation drawer. It doesn't actually work. <laughs> Oh, Lordy, what a business. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but you understand it's life, right? And that's what we talk about. It's life. You think everything is going great, and then it isn't. But, you know, it's still a beautiful bathroom, people. And I cannot tell you enough that, you know, although it was a lot of money, I want to tell you the hardware alone for my shower when I upgraded it. The hardware alone was like $2,000 just for the hardware. That was just for the rain, the rain shower and, and the hand shower thing. I mean, it's ridiculous. But what I have to say is every day when I walk into that bathroom, I am grateful I spent the money. Does that make sense? You see, it was the right place to spend the money for me. I didn't need to redo the kitchen. The kitchen is just fine. Thank you. But that bathroom desperately needed an upgrade. And it's, you know, the, for the joy of Jody saying it worth every penny. The, I cannot tell you, Jody, the joy it brings. I wanted to ask you, Jody, you know, you spent the money. You, you managed to find a really good deal online um, with your vanity. Do you still smile every time you see the vanity? Because, you know, that's what you've got to look at, is does this bring me joy? Because I don't know about the rest of you. In my lifetime, I've spent an awful lot of money on stuff that does not bring me joy. And now it's like, now I'm going to spend my money in the right places. You're right. Jody's saying, yes, indeed. I love it so much. Exactly. And, you know, it's just like I was prepared to go without you know, updating my car so that I could have the bathroom. I went without, um, you know, fancy new, um, uh, what do you call them, dressing, dresses and things so that I could have the bathroom. I There are a lot of things that I didn't replace so I could have the bathroom. And I am amazed how much, um, how much, Joy, it's given me. Kez is saying you should get her to reappraise the house after the renovations to see how much more you get for it if you ever sell it. I can already tell you, Kez, that I have the documentation to prove that the renovation cost quarter of a million. I would say that most people who, you know, I, I that come into a house that is this old their concern would be the electrical. Um, I've got documentation to show that every single piece of electric, electrical cord was checked and done. All right. And, and so all the things that are important to buyers, like the bathroom, um, are now done. And the only one that's a little bit substandard is the guest bathroom, but not a major problem. I already know what I'm going to do there. And the laundry room needs a coat of paint on one wall. And I'll do that over the, the winter. And then basically, this is a new house, uh, completely renovated. So not a bad deal. I would think, I didn't ask her, but I could ask her. Um, but I would think I've probably put at least fifty to 100000 on the, the, the value. And I already bought it at a high price, I must add. So I'm saying my soul needs a renovation. <laughs> I am hitting the Nordic Spa for my 30th in December. I hate the idea of spending the money, but I know the joy that it will bring. You know, that is what I want you to be aware of. Um, I, I, I touched on this at lunchtime as well. Think how many things you do every week for other people. Uh, how much of your time you spend doing things for other people? How much of your money you spend doing things for other people that you would never do for yourself? And then say to yourself, it is time that I start looking after me. Don't wait until you're too old to enjoy it. All right? 
it's like it is time that you start looking after your needs, not everybody else's. So I think the fact that you're going to go to a Nordic spa for your 30th is a wonderful gift to yourself. I know um, that doing the bathroom is a wonderful gift to me. As I said, it brings me joy. I was also mentioning, and I'd like you to think about that, I am saving money. You heard me say in my dishwasher, I don't let it dry my things anymore. You know, I just let time dry it. Um, very important just to save a little bit of money there. I am no longer heating the whole house to the level I used to. I heat um, the house to a certain level, and then I have little space heaters to heat up the spaces where I sit. But I only have them on when I'm sitting there. Now, does that make sense? So what I found as well is one of the places where it was cool is where I sit in my craft room. It's, it, it's still cool at my foot level. So what I've done is put a, a small, small heater actually in the place where you put your legs, you know, in that, in that hole in, in, you know, of the desk. I've actually put a small heater in there, but one I can easily turn off and on. So the only time it's on is when I'm sitting there. In my bathroom, I have a little ceramic heater. The bathroom, you know, is at about 69, 68, 69. But when I use the bathroom and I get a shower, I walk in there, crank it up, get the bathroom nice and warm before I get into the shower. Then when I finished and I'm dry and everything like that, boom, then I turn it down and I turn it off. And I think it will show in the amount of um, cost that I'm going to be incurring. I'll let you know how it goes. Jody's saying, it makes me smile, Sal, to hear how you speak of the bathroom upgrade with such joy. That is priceless. I, I always, you know, wanted that. Um, the other thing that, that Patty said was she said, I love the colors. Uh, she said, you did a really good job in, in picking these colors. They are very, you know, I've got this sort of, can you, can I move it so you can see? Hang on. Pray everything doesn't go clunk. On that wall, can you see the color of that wall? It's like a, a deep Wedgwood blue. Can you see that? It's like a, a, a bluey gray, more gray than blue. Not a lot of light on there. Hang on a second. <laughs> Hope you can see that. Stay. Um, and I have that accent color, and the rest is a sort of a light gray that goes with it. So in every room, I have one wall that is that deep. Uh, color. And the thing that Patty taught me a long time ago is if you want a room to look bigger, I'm pretty sure you might all know this, but I didn't know that. But if you want a room to look bigger, make the back wall the farthest away from you, the feature wall, the darker wall. Did you all know that? Because what it does is it makes your eye go all the way to there and it elongates the room. So, for example, when I did my bathroom, and remember, I had to pick all the tiles for my bathroom on the internet, right? I didn't get to see them in real life. I had to do a lot of trusting. Um, but what I did is I had the lighter gray all the way going to the shower, and then the shower uh, stall is white at the bottom, you know, that wall-to-wall -wall <laughs> wall to wall and then the back wall you will not be surprised to hear is a darker gray so you know because that pulls your eye all the way down makes the bathroom look bigger and she kept saying to me you did an incredible job with these colors and things and, and where you put the color and I said well you taught me you taught me and all the hotels I visited taught me you know, you've got to think about how many of you have been to a hotel and gone, oh, it looks so neat and clean and tidy. And then what I've been doing, you know, is all the time I was traveling, I kept saying to myself, one day I'm going to have a bathroom like this. I don't know how I'm going to afford it, but one day I'm going to have a bathroom like this. 
That was my promise to myself, and I did it. Um, I don't recommend having a fire. <laughs> but, yeah, it's the price I had to pay to get the bathroom. What else was she impressed with? Oh, that I actually changed the flooring to a light gray. The, the flooring is... Hmm, actually, it doesn't look gray there, does it? It looks brown. Maybe it's just my computer. But this is like a almost, um, what do you call it? A whitewash gray. <laughs> Did I describe that well? <laughs> it, you know, it's like a whitey gray. It's, it's still gray, but it's, it looks like it's almost like a whitewash. It, I wanted to have that beach house type feel to it. Uh, and that worked really well. And funny enough, the carpets I have in here are actually outdoor carpets. But they're the sort of carpets you would have if you had a beach house. And, and, and Patty said to me, what made you do that? And I said, I don't know. I wanted the beach house sort of feel to it. And she said, well, you sure created it. She said, that's incredible. I've never seen anybody do that. She said, that's so clever. Because she said, it's totally unique. And it fits beautifully with the walls and everything else. Um, it was so clever. And I said, <laughs> I didn't have much choice. You know, I had to get carpets in a hurry. And the only ones I could find were those. Um, but you know me, I'll, I'll make do. What else did she talk about? Something else. Can't remember. Oh, you know, I bought the, the um, little... Uh, wardrobe type things for the spare bedroom she said she thought that was incredibly clever for who I am and you know that I have so many different crafts and things that I work with she said that was brilliant so and you that it takes up so little room and you've got so much storage that you've put into there and I said well once I got those boxes out of there I will have uh, Sam saying, I also love the red accents of your decorations bring into the kitchen. Uh, you need more red. I, funny yeah. enough, I actually am, will probably change from red soon. Uh, you know, I've had the red accents for quite a while. But, you know, if you notice, I'm very careful about what I make the accent. Getting a new kettle isn't a major expense. Um, those containers up there are all Folgers uh, coffee things that I've reused. And I also have them. Uh, all right, they've got milk powder and oats and flour and macaroni also in those containers. Um, but again, something that I learned a long time ago is don't make your walls uh, the feature colors, right? I, I think about keeping your walls pretty bland so that you can add different colors. Now, here's my question. With that deep uh, sort of almost dark gray, blue color and gray, what colors can I change? Turquoise would look wonderful with it, all right, if I wanted to. I could have yellow accents and it would look wonderful with it, all right, as a color scheme. I could have... Deep blue would look really good with it. Um, I, you know, I can change the the covers on my couches to go with it. So that's what I thought about: is how do I do this and and, and be able to change it up, you know, per season or anything like that. You know, they make such good uh, covers now for couches and things, and you can get them for you know a really decent price, and you can change the look of the room in a heartbeat. I was quite surprised when I bought the new cover for my futon. You know, um, it just changed the look of that area. And I said that I may well put the futon into my spare bedroom uh, and then have a mattress that will go on top of it. But I will store the mattress behind it, um, sort of almost like a Murphy bed. And the only time the mattress will come down is when the bed, yeah, the futon goes down into a bed, then we huck the mattress on top of it. So, you know, I've tried to think things through, not for other people as much as for me. Somebody said at lunchtime, I think it was Jeannie, said that she had a futon 
in her spare bedroom, but it isn't comfortable. And I said, you don't want a spare bedroom too comfortable, you know, <laughs> otherwise people stay. Um, <laughs> uh, I find it interesting, Sam, that you would like to see um, more red. I, I see, I don't think it needs more red at all. But, you know, it's a personal choice, right? I, I want to try and keep it uh, pretty clean if I can. Yes, because you're right. Ju you know, that's where I realized it. When I saw what Judy did with her couches, you know, when the kids came, you know, she immediately put covers on all her couches. And, you know, it's a clever thing because she changes by the season now. And it looks, you know, it's really good. It's a clever way to do it. You don't have to buy new couches. You just buy new covers. So, um, and it really does change the whole look of the room. I also thought about that in terms of my artwork. Um, you know, that I try to put artwork in certain places, but I also am aware that I've got boxes of my artwork still unpacked. But, you know, it'd be nice to be able to sort of swap it out every maybe every six months, you know, put some new ones up there just so that I can enjoy them. And it has been interesting to me that um, most of the contractors who came in uh, commented on the art and said they loved it. And I made sure they all left with a piece of, that they liked uh, to take with them, to thank them for the time that they took to make my house look so pretty. So, <laughs> you know, I will eventually get back to throwing paint around, right? Please tell me. <laughs> I, I just keep you going one day uh, I and you know the funny thing is I keep trying to find um I wanted to find the certain paint because I wanted to do something with it I still haven't found it I know it's in the house I just can't find it yet so and what I will probably do is to get um Marnie to come over because Marnie is really good for helping me do stuff you know, and just say, you know, give me four hours. Let's try and get those boxes empty. And now that I've got places to put stuff, I, you know, I'm getting close to being able to empty those boxes. So that's what I'm hoping for anyway. So there we go. Uh, I have internet. I have streaming. Guess what I'm going to do this evening? All right. Sam is saying, I love bold colors and contrasts. However, I see what you mean. I really see the beauty in the fresh, clean look. Yes, that's, you know, I learned that one quite honestly, Sam. I, I literally, if you look at open houses, if you look at, um, you know, and, and Patty is an absolute wizard at staging things, what absolutely stunned me, Sam, and I don't mind telling you that, and I talked to her about it on Wednesday, what stunned me is when she came to sell my house, I was waiting for her to walk in and say, we need to get rid of this, 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 and this, and we only need this here, you know, which is what they do when they're staging. And she walked into my house and said, it looks wonderful. And I said, no, no, what do I need to put away? Nothing. What? She said, you've already done it. You know exactly what to do. She said, I, I, there are not many homes I walk into where literally it is ready to show. And she said, you've done an amazing job of doing that because I know you're a you know, hoarder at stuff. And she <laughs> said, you know, it's, it just looks clean and tidy and neat and, you know, elegant and all those sort of things. And, you know, when it, it was really funny because the guys that bought it fell in love with the whole ambiance of it. It was, you know, it, it was just like they totally felt the love that I had put into the house, which is wonderful. All right, so Bernice is saying, you have the same dilemma with my mom-in-law. She does paint like you, and she can't because of unpacking and the grandkids, etc. I can. You see, this is the whole thing. I can if I really want to. This is my life. I can do what I like with it. But this year, unpacking was more important than painting. And, you know, I still got an awful lot of paint, paintings that I have nowhere to put them. So I may have to start just trying to advertise some and selling some 
Um, but what I would like to be able to do is to frame some. Um, and, you know, it's like the, the picture that I painted when I was away. You all remember that one? Hang on. You remember I did this one while I was away? Um, and Patty hadn't seen it. And she said, oh, my God. She said, um, when we were deciding where I'm going to hang that now, because that's not going to go anywhere. That's a memory. And for those of you who don't know, I painted that on an Amazon cardboard box flap. If you look very carefully, you can see there's a bend here. But um, And that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to buy canvases anymore. I'm going to start recycling Amazon boxes because I have rather a lot of them. And, you know, it's amazing. I have a, um, a painting in this room. Can I do this? Hold on. Hang on. Bear with me. This painting on the wall... I don't know if you can see it. You can't see what you're looking at. That's my dining room. Can you see a painting there? <laughs> a pink one with blue? Did you get to see it? I couldn't see because of the angle of the computer. Um, that one I did 30 years ago on a piece of cardboard. It doesn't have glass protecting it. It doesn't have glass protecting it. I just painted it. I needed something to match some furniture, and I painted it with a spatula from the kitchen. <laughs> so that is, you know, it's a joy that I'm looking forward to, I must admit. By the way, you remember I spent extra money getting those fancy lights that I put in my bathroom and in my craft room. Patty absolutely went gaga over them. She just said... Wow, that just elevates the whole house. Just And she said you were very clever to put one in the master bathroom and then the other one, as you walk out of the master bathroom, you're looking at the other one halfway down the house. And I said, oh, actually, I've got three. I put it in the guest bathroom as well, but a smaller one. And she said, you know, just so clever, Sal, the way that you did that, because it ties it in subconsciously, even if people don't realize what you've done. Yes, Jody, and isn't that the truth? Jody's saying, I love that story about, you know, the cardboard and the paint. Um, cardboard and a spatula, if you want to paint, you can paint. That's why I'm saying nobody's stopping me from painting. All right? I'm just choosing not to go there yet. I want to be more settled. I'm trying not to hurry any of this. I'm trying to do it at my own pace. My next job is going to be to tidy up the dining room. All right, so Kez is saying, I know people that ha the house is 80% neutral and they add color with bedding, towels, cushion covers. Uh, I draw and color while watching TV. Yes, you see, the thing is to do what brings you pleasure. All right. Um, I know, you know, I now have a sewing basket next to my couch in the living room. I've never had that in my life. But, you know, I don't care now about who sees that. It's like when I sit and watch television, that's when I'm going to mend something. So that's the right place for it to be. And I don't care if nobody else would put it there. I really don't care. I have two uh, glass tables in my lounge area. And between it, I have two cubies, but I've covered it with um, one of um, uh Pat's quilts, so that when I'm watching TV, if I want the quilt, I've got it right in front of me. But in the meantime, it's covering up all my um, accounting stuff. It's sitting in two cubies underneath the quilt, so that if I'm watching television, I can sort out stuff by months and so forth just quickly and then, you know, get on with my life. You see, I'm trying to do things that work for me much more than I've ever done before, not for anybody else's benefit. Uh, I'm amazed how hmm. 
All right, this is what I've noticed with my fridge. I don't know if you can see that, but my fridge always was absolutely overflowing with stuff, and I'm slowly cleaning up stuff in my fridge. And I'm trying to just buy enough fruit and vegetables for the week, other than the frozen stuff. I'm trying to clean up all the little jars and things that I've got because I had way too many. So and it's it's the whole thing that we've been talking about all along, right? Every single day I will stand in a given any room and I'll go, what's the next thing you'd like to do in here? What 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 is the next thing? Makes sense. And then I start, I was saying that I know that I'm about getting ready to redo part of my laundry room for the winter. And I'm already counted up how many hinges I will need because I'm going to be taking the doors off and putting new hinges on and painting them and how many knobs I will need and how much paint I will need. And then it, once I've got all those bits done, I will then have everything ready so that after Christmas I will start painting but the house, not um, on canvas. So I do things in a very slow, methodical way. I think Jody probably knows more about that than anybody because, you know, I talk to her about it so much. But she will tell you that I literally um, have a, like a mini vision of what I want to do. And then I systematically, little step by little step, work my way there. It has taken me seven months to get so that I'm nearly comfortable in my craft room. Uh, I still have a lot of cleaning up and tidying up to do in there, but, you know, it's amazing that I have got most of those boxes put away. But, you know, in the old days, I had to have everything tomorrow. Do any of you fall into that trap? You know, I, I now don't do that. I go, I've you know, if I never do it, it's also okay. But what would I like to do? What would bring me joy now? And how can I do it? Uh, on a shoestring budget. One of the things I loved about Jody was she knew that her bathroom needed upgrading, but she couldn't afford to do that. But what she found was a really nice vanity on Facebook, and she bought the vanity. And it's a very modern-looking vanity. Changed the whole room, you know. And I think you paid twenty-five bucks for the vanity, if I'm right, Jody. Something like that. You know, it was an absolute steal. Of course, you had to go get it, but you know, it was just like. You look at it there, if you want to do stuff, it's possible to do now. So take it easy, guys. Part of the thing about coping with living is don't think it all, all has to change. On the other hand, um, hi. Yeah, go right ahead, Gregory. Good to meet you. Gregory's asking, can I ask questions here? Go right ahead. Uh, I would also say that one of the, the, the things that I try and do ask myself all the time is if I had to sell the place this next week, um, does it look just about ready to go uh, on the market? I always think about that. Not perfect, but you know, how much time would it take for me? Would I need to repaint a lot of stuff? No, it's always I try to keep it at that level all the time. Sam is saying, I'm an impulse person. I managed to keep myself in check, but it took me a long time. Gosh darn, it's hard. I agree. But that's why I go, what one step can I take? Uh, all right, so Gregory, uh, that is a question I would suggest you ask your pharmacy or your doctor. And with your name, I'm wondering whether this is um, for real. <laughs> uh, possibly, yeah, I agree it is possibly a troll. But please remember, Jody, <laughs> that my favorite viewer of all time, Oz, uh, came in as a troll. And so <laughs> not all trolls are bad people. And I, I often wonder, you know, um, the, the, the only connection there was the question linked to his name. And that, that's why I'm sure that you saw that as well. Yep. 
So that's why I always say about trolls, you know, be careful who you nuked because some of the best ones I've ever heard came from moles. And he was so bad to me. <laughs> and I was thinking I haven't heard from him recently. I hope he's okay. All right, everybody. So I hope you enjoyed the... Oh, okay. Here we go. I'm being serious. Don't judge. I didn't judge you. All right. So, um, Greg, I, I really have to tell you that uh, if that is truly your condition, then you definitely need to be talking to a medical professional um, or your pharmacy. They, they have medications that can help you. It certainly isn't something I would want to give advice on. Actually, I could give you some advice if it's there. I, I'm going to give it to you anyway. Uh, I believe that if you start the day, um, if you start the day with a cucumber and celery smoothie, you know, just cucumbers and celery, um, and blend them up and drink that on an empty stomach will help a great deal. Okay, so definitely that's getting worse, not better. All right, Gregory, nice try, honey. Um, have, have a good life. <laughs> um, all right, so guys, I am out of here. We'll be back on Sunday uh, talking about coping with stress. And I'm hoping <laughs> that I won't have too many examples for you. If there is anything you'd like me to do on the Friday evening, uh, broadcast, let me know. I do need to give you a heads up. And that is that uh, next Friday, I may need to go to a celebration of life. I think that there are going to be some ashes spread on that day. And I need to be there if that is the day. That's what I heard it was going to be on the 22nd. And when I looked at it, I went, oh my gosh, that's on Friday. Um, but I'm certain you will all understand that I've missed a lot of um, spreading of ashes and, and celebration of life, as we all have because of the pandemic. And I would definitely like to support my friend in going there for that. Oh, and look at that. Oops. Now, here is my egg. It's just perfect. Look at that. It actually totally thawed and looks like a regular egg. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up my little uh, crepe maker here and uh, actually have a fried egg on. I'm going to take a little bit of bread and fry some of the dough up uh, to make a toast and um, have an egg on toast rather than more chocolate. <laughs> and this I will save for another day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I hope you had fun. I, yeah, Sam saying, I totally understand. Thank you, Sal and Jody. It's been fun. Good night. Yeah. Good night, everybody. And have a wonderful weekend. And I hope uh, that we have many more that we can do. So, but I will put up notification because Jody will remind me. Uh, if that celebration of life goes ahead on Friday, um, I will put up a notification just to warn you. Uh, I do appreciate your understanding on that one. This is dear Mama Sal saying, it's fun to be back. <laughs> I, you know, there's part of me that thoroughly enjoyed my, my vacation. <laughs> and Jody said to me, why don't you just see it as a vacation? And I, I, I slept a lot. And I, I kept wondering what to do with my time. <laughs> because I wasn't having to prepare anything. But, you know, I still did, thank goodness, so that I could do something tonight. This is Dear Mama Sol saying thank you all so much. We'll see you on Sunday. Look after one another, but most of all, look after yourself. And please, would you do some things now for you, not for everybody else? Bye-bye for now.